The following guidelines can help you make sure your CFT simulation is a success. 1. Examine the quality of the mesh in Fluent. There are two basic things that you should do before you start a simulation. The second way is to look at maximum cell skewness. For example, using the Compute button in the Contours dialog box after initializing the model. As a rule of thumb, the skewness should be below 0.98. You can also use the Report Quality function to calculate the minimum cell orthogonality. If there are mesh problems, you may have to remesh the problem. 2. Scale the mesh and check length units. In ANSYS Fluent, all physical dimensions are initially assumed to be in meters. You should scale the mesh accordingly. Other quantities can also be scaled independently of other units used. ANSYS Fluent defaults to SI units. Three, employ the appropriate physical models. Four, set the energy under relaxation factor between 0.95 and one. For problems with conjugate heat transfer, when the conductivity ratio is very high, the smaller values of the energy under relaxation factor practically stall the convergence rate. 5. Use node-based gradients with unstructured tetrahedral meshes. The node-based averaging scheme is known to be more accurate than the default cell-based scheme for unstructured meshes, most notably for triangular and tetrahedral meshes. Six, monitor convergence with residuals history. Residual plots can show when the residual values have reached the specified tolerance. After the simulation, note if your residual have decreased by at least three orders of magnitude to at least 10 power minus 3. For the pressure-based solver, the scale energy residual must decrease to 10 power minus 6. Also, the scaled species residual may need to decrease to 10 power minus 5 to achieve a species balance. You can also monitor lift, drag, or moment forces as well as pertinent variables or functions, for example, surface integrals at a boundary or any defined surfaces. 7. Run the CFT simulation using second-order discretization for better accuracy rather than a faster solution. A converged solution is not necessarily a correct one. You should use the second-order upwind discretization scheme for final results. 8. Monitor values of solution variables to make sure that any change in the solution variables from one iteration to the next are negligible.
9. Verify that property conservation is satisfied. After the simulation, note if overall property conservation has been achieved. In addition to monitoring residual and variable histories, you should also check for overall heat and mass balances. At a minimum, the net imbalance should be less than 1% of the smallest flux through the domain boundary. 10. Check for mesh dependence. You should ensure that the solution is mesh independent and use mesh adaption to modify the mesh or create additional meshes for the mesh independence study. 11. Check to see that the solution makes sense based on engineering judgment. If flow features do not seem reasonable, you should reconsider your physical models and boundary conditions. Reconsider the choice of the boundary locations or the domain. An inadequate choice of domain, especially the outlet boundary, can significantly impact solution accuracy. You are encouraged to collaborate with master CFD experts in order to develop a solution process that ensures good results for you and for your specific applications. To benefit from master CFD services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at sign mastercfd.com or visit our website www.mastercfd.com.